Hello viewers, thanks for tuning into this channel. And today's topic is about uh, vaginal yeast infection with emphasis on what is the recurring status of this disease and what role does otosconazole, which is the generic name, or the brand name Vivgeo play in addressing this condition. So before I begin, I, I hope to, uh, uh, to give you a brief synopsis of what is entailed into the video or presentation of uh, which I'll talk about uh, what is the recurring status of of uh, the vag vaginal yeast infection, indications of uh, otosoconazole, contraindications of this new drug, warnings and precautions of this new drug, adverse reactions or side effects, and recommendations for ease of use. Hoping you get to learn something new and uh, and uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. What is the recurring status of vaginal yeast infection? Recurring status of vaginal yeast infection or in other words recurring vulvovagina conjesis is defined as three or more infections per year. And the symptoms include vaginal itching, soreness, and discharge. Indications of otosoconazole. This is very crucial to note about this drug in that it is indicated to reduce the incidence of recurrent vulvovaginal candiasis in females without reproductive potential have a history of recurrent vulvovaginal candiasis. So as you notice, it is uh, targeting a specific group and for this reason, it is safer to use in postmenopausal women or infertile women. Now we can look at the contraindications of uh, this new drug. But a saconazole is not safe to use in females who can become pregnant. And it is also not, not safe in a pregnant or those who are intending to become pregnant because Vivjo or otosoconazole may be harmful to your unborn child. So inform your doctor if you are pregnant or suspect you are pregnant or intend to become pregnant. And if you are breastfeeding or intend to breastfeed, it is unknown whether Vivjo enters your breast milk. And it is also not recommended for using anyone who is allergic to otosconazole or any ingredients in this drug. Next, we'll be discussing warnings and precautions of this drug. Vivgeo has been linked to fetal harm in animal studies. As a result of these findings, Vivjo is not recommended for any female patients of childbearing age. Next, I'll be discussing adverse reactions or side effects of this new drug. The most common uh, side effects of Vivjo are headache and nausea and it is recommended to take with food for best absorption and uh, in order to get the best therapeutic outcomes the manufacturer recommends to swallow the capsules whole and for this reason you should avoid chewing, crushing, dissolving or opening uh, the capsule.
For the next slide, we'll be looking at the options for recurrent vulvovaginal congestis with uh, emphasis on uh, recommendations for the safe use of uh, VivGel. For any patient with uh, persistent symptoms of recurrent vulvovaginal congestis, it's best to first uh, use the longer course treatments like uh, the vaginal azoles or such as clotrimazole or orofluconazole because at this moment there is no evidence that that uh, the new drug Vivjo is more effective than these first line options. And then uh, this, the other consideration is that uh, 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 Vivjo should be used as a last resort because of its uh, teratogenic effects, implying that uh, it's likely to affect uh, the embryo or fetus while in development. So in this case, it's safer for people that are either postmenopausal or those who are deemed to be infertile. And this uh, marks uh, the end of uh, the presentation. Hopefully you learned something new. And in case of any clarifications, don't forget to, to uh, present your comments and uh, to like the video and subscribe for additional videos. All right, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.